Good stuff this evening in our scriptures. Good stuff from the prophet Isaiah that begins with this tremendously hopeful message. He says to the people, look, remember that I took this entire nation and, and led them through the sea out of slavery in Egypt into the freedom of the promised land. Remember that. And then he says to them, but now I am doing something new. He said, don't get caught up in what happened in the past because now I am doing something new. Now I am doing something better. And we can wonder what, possible, what could possibly be better than taking an entire nation out of slavery and leading them into a land flowing with milk and honey. And yet Jesus, and yet God says to the people of Israel, the people who were in exile, behold, I am doing something new. And this new thing that God speaks of has to do with bringing abundance, bringing life where there doesn't seem to be any. I will make a river flow through the desert. I will make a path in the wilderness. I will give hope for your future. This is the new thing that God promises for his people. And I don't, I don't know about you, but I'm on board. You know, I'm interested in what God's doing. I, uh, because I think this prophecy is meant for us as well, that God is doing a new thing for us. Because I think so often we can find ourselves in the position of that woman caught in adultery, maybe in a different sin, but the same experience. Stuck. Caught. Guilty. Not feeling like we can be free. Not feeling like we can take the next step. I mean, maybe for us, it's, it's getting stuck in our prayer life, not feeling like we're making any progress. Or maybe it's that, that life seems to have us by the tail and we, we can't seem to move forward. Maybe we're struggling with a particular sin and we just, we just can't leave it behind. Whatever it is, what we need is what Jesus offers to that woman who is caught in adultery. Freedom. A new beginning. A chance to start over. And this is what God offers to us. This is the new thing that is being extended to us through Jesus. This chance to start over again. The chance to leave sin behind and to embrace the freedom that God offers to us. I mean, this is the story of St. Paul. This is what he is uh, emphasizing in this reading that we hear this evening. You know, St. Paul says to us, all I want to do is forget what lies behind and strain forward to what lies ahead. I love these words of St. Paul. Straining toward what lies ahead. You know, this isn't just a, a stroll through the park. It's not, you know, this little jaunt through the mall. We're not just kind of aimlessly wandering through life and waiting for something to happen. But St. Paul speaks of straining toward what lies ahead. Pulling behind us sometimes what needs to be pulled behind us, ripping off our sin as we go along, and moving toward the promise that God has set before us. And St. Paul, more than any other, knows this well. I mean, we know what he did before his conversion. We know that he persecuted Christians. And he knows better than anyone else what needs to be left behind. But this isn't just for St. Paul. This is the story of every Christian. We need to strain forward, straining toward what lies ahead, moving toward the promise that God holds out to us. You know, I was uh, listening to, uh, to someone speak recently, and, and uh, he was speaking with uh, a foreign accent, uh, one that I wasn't quite used to, and I, I was doing some other things as I was listening, and, and I, had to, uh, I had to put everything down and, and really focus on every word that he was saying, because I, I had to get used to the accent. And, you know, if, if this guy wasn't saying anything interesting, I would have just blown it off. You know? kept doing what I was doing and not, not worried about it. But I wanted to hear what he had to say, and so I really had to focus on the words that he was saying. And you know, I think the same is true in our relationship with God. If we don't trust in the promise that's being offered to us, if we have no hope that this new thing that God is offering to us 
is something that is worth striving for, then we're just going to distract ourselves with the, thing, the things around us. We'll get caught up in the sin and, and we won't pay attention to what God is doing. But if you and I want the promise that God offers, if you and I want hope for the future, if you want a reason to keep getting out of bed every morning and going in search of something more, if you want your life to mean something, and to be destined towards greatness, if you want to inherit the kingdom of God that God offers to us, then you're going to have to strain. You're going to have to strive. You're going to have to fight through the sin and the temptation that God throws our way. There is not one of us who receives an exception on this. All of us have to fight forward. All of us have to keep moving in the midst of all the temptation that surrounds us. My friends, not only do we need this as individuals, but we need it as a community. And it means that if you're struggling with prayer, then seek help and ask someone to help you. You know, if, you're, if you want to learn more about your faith, but you're not sure where to start, then ask somebody. You know, if somebody leaves our parish and goes elsewhere, you know, that is a loss for us. Because if we, we are losing the resources of their giftedness. My friends, we need each other. If we're going to move forward together as a community of faith, then all of us, all of us have to do the personal work of growing in our relationship with God, growing in our understanding of what God is doing for us. Not one of us is accepted from this responsibility. All of us have to take on this challenge. And we can be a stronger parish for it. What we don't want is to get stuck. What we don't want is to stop moving forward. What we don't want is to get stuck in the mud. You know, it, it, it's easy for that to happen for any community. And when it happens, then, then you know, so often we just kind of sit around and, and throw stones at each other and we start talking about what everybody's doing, so and so is carrying their weight. I hear that so-and-so is doing this. I hear that this guy's falling into this sin. We get trapped. We get stuck in this little kind of insulated community. We're not going anywhere. And so the invitation for us, in some ways in these remaining couple weeks of Lent, is to strive for the promise that God offers, to strive for a newness of life, a new thing that God is extending to us. And so let's embrace the challenge of these next couple of weeks of Lent. Let's leave our sin behind. Let's embrace the, the personal work that all of us have to do. And let's take a step forward as a community of faith, trusting that the promise that God holds out to us is greater than what we have now.